I mean, seriously, who has time to watch TV? I guess when I say TV, I'm really talking about streaming. But same thing. I mean, I, for one, just feel like I never have time to, like, keep up with whatever everybody, whatever everyone else is keeping up with. So I'm always late. And you know what? I kind of am okay with that. Like, I, I like being late. I don't go out and see a movie in the theater. It's opening weekend. That's just too much anxiety for me. Um, feeling the need to, like, be caught up on all the latest episodes again too anxiety inducing for me I do like to watch stuff but I mean it's like if I'm on top of it great if I'm not I try not to stress too much about it so with that said I'm going to be backtracking a little bit on some things that I've seen some of them are more recent than others but let's just you know get into it I always have these broken down into you know lists for different streaming services um, if I do actually watch anything on like live TV, because that's still a thing, um, I usually um, will mention that, but it just is so far and few between. I think you guys all know that I spend a significant amount of time watching PBS, but outside of that, everything else I watch is streaming. So I'm going to start with uh, Roku. Um there's a lot of different things on Roku that I didn't realize was there, but oddly enough, I don't watch any of it. <laughs> the only thing that we, I have to say, reoccurringly watch on Roku is their um, kind of um, streaming wrap-up show that they have. It's called Roku Recommends, <laughs> and that's what we watch on the Roku. It's basically a show about what's on streaming, <laughs> and then that's it, and so I like it. That's what we watch on Roku. <laughs> Moving on to Prime. Again, with Prime, it's again, it has a lot of content on there. We're just, for whatever reason, not watching most of it. I don't, there's just too many choices out there. So right now, I think um, we just finished Clarkson Farm season two. Um, and I've not been watching it as diligently as my husband um, he's like rewatched some episodes, but um, I I do like follow it. It's a bunch of shenanigans, um, but you know it's good stuff too. I mean, it's basically how not to be a farmer. But there, you know, I will give him credit. There are times when he is like legitimately crying, trying, and then the little people in the town where he's he's living in are just like, no, you can't do that. And you're like, but this is actually good for everybody. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the drama and hilarity that is Clarkson Farm, but it's it's a good time. So the other thing that we recently watched and finished over a period, we didn't binge it. Um, we, we like to, you guys know this, I'm into animation. And so we'll like, we pick up something light that we'll watch sometimes like while we're eating, um, just because as I've gotten older with some of my food issues, I can't watch something that might potentially gross on screen while I'm eating, if I'm going to be you know, eating and watching at the same time. We don't always eat and watch, but we do a lot. So anyway, um, there's a little show called Nico and the Sword of Light. There's two seasons of it and it's just really cute. But aside from it being really cute, you know, there's life lessons and things going on. It's, it's really good animation. Um, some of the the writing and like the quirkiness, the things that they say, it's, it's, a, it's a good show. So if you are not completely opposed to animation, and you have access to Prime um, TV video, I would say check it out. So next I'm going to move on to Disney Plus. So this is where I'm going to be backtracking a little bit. Um, I finished um, The Mandalorian season three. Everybody, you know, has their opinions about that. Um, I would say that I am one of those people who says if they don't continue it moving forward that I would be satisfied with the way it ended, but I really do feel like they are going to continue it. Um, but again, if that doesn't happen, like this was a good place to stop it. It it, it kind of irritates me when a show ends and you don't know that's going to be the ending. And then 10 years later, you realize the last episode was the end. And like, that wasn't a good way to end it, you know? And I feel like um, Mandalorian season three did something where they're like, we could go back and continue this, but if we don't, this is a good place to end it. 
Um, I've also been watching The Magic of Animal Kingdom. I watched the first season like a year or two ago when we first got Disney Plus, and it's just been sitting there for a while. And so I'm I'm watching it now, and uh, that one really tugs at my heartstrings. I mean, I I am not going to get on the Disney bandwagon right now as far as the the overall like Disney Corporation and stuff like that. But what they're doing at their you know safaris and aquatic centers and animal parks and things like that their um, mission of conservation and things like that I, I really I think it's um, amazing to see what these people do and they just happen to be doing it under that Disney umbrella when I'm watching this show I'm not thinking Disney I'm thinking look what these veterinarians look what these animal keepers look what these zookeepers, keep look what these people are doing you know and so I think that's why I like it and I get to learn so much about you know animals that I didn't know before. So um, if you are like my mother and you don't like animals, I do not recommend this show. But if you are like me and you do like animals and you have access to Disney Plus, it's a, it's a really good show. Um, you know, people have their opinions about like zoos and aquatic centers and things like that. But uh, a lot of what they're doing is to get animals back out into the wild. They only keep animals if they can't be released into the wild. So off that um, bandwagon and high horse. What I'm currently watching right now, I have one more episode left of Muppet Mayhem. Oh my goodness. I was so excited when I heard that they were making a Muppet Mayhem show. <laughs> I mean, um, they have been around for as long as the Muppets have been around. You know, they were the house band for the Muppet show back in like, I don't know, 70s. And um, they've been, appeared in a lot of the different movies and stuff. And I just... And then Animal, of course, he's like like the breakout star. Like he was in the Muppet Babies. He's been in all the movies. He's part of the Electric Mayhem, you know. And so I just, I really enjoy this show. And I have one more episode and I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it too. My husband and I were talking about this will probably be one of those limited kind of standalone series just because of the way that they did the first season. It's all about them trying to like make an album. So it's like, what would they possibly do for another season? season like they would have to come up with a reason to have another season so again this is one of those shows I have a feeling that once it's over it's going to be over and I think I'm going to be okay with that but I love it if they want to do more of it I'm all about it <laughs> it's just a good time and oh my goodness baby animal oh I want a baby animal so much I know I have issues guys I, I I'm a grown woman but I want a baby animal <laughs> all right Last thing that I'm currently watching, again, because we're not like binging these things, we are catching them when we can, but Star Wars Vision season two is out and just the variety this time around. I mean, the, the first season was great, don't get me wrong, but like just, you know, knowing that we're getting, you know, these influences, these things that, you know, previously have not been connected with the Star Wars universe now get to be a part of it. I was just beyond myself when I saw that our... I always say it wrong. Ardman did did a um one. I love anything that they do. Pretty much, I love. I'm I am a sucker for some claymation, and so or stop motion animation is the more accurate term. But regardless, I love the fact that they submitted a story, and so we're still going through that right now, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, just being able to see what people can do in that short form storytelling. Um, with animation to me it's just mind-boggling because you get like these are not feature-length films they, they last a few minutes but you just feel like you're sucked into this world and I, I believe that is what you call talent <laughs> okay so now we're going to move over to the tried and true for me anyway Netflix um they need to get their pricing stuff figured out they got to stop hiking that up I I am a diehard true blue you know Netflix subscriber however um, if they keep raising their prices, then I'm going to be a true blue Netflix um, subscriber on a periodic basis. Like, because <laughs> what we do with some of our other streaming networks is we'll have one for a month and then unsubscribe for a while, have another. And so Netflix might get thrown right in there with the rest of them. So they need to watch themselves anyway. So um, I'm like I said, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, something that I watched a while back was behind her eyes I don't know if I, I mentioned this I, I remember telling my niece about it so this one um I actually 
decided to check it out because I saw it on like a list, um, like a blog list of underrated um, Netflix shows. No, no, no. I forget. It was, it had an interesting title. It was something like um, mediocre Netflix shows you should check out. Like, why would you want to check out a mediocre Netflix? And I don't think the show is mediocre, but I understand that was like kind of not clickbait because you once you read the the article, it was pretty good. But basically what they were saying is there are some shows out there that are not going to like blow your mind, but they're still worth watching. And I feel like this was one of those shows. So, and I remember distinctly that the three reasons why they said this show was worth watching was that it had a good soundtrack, which it did. Um, it's the first opening scene of the show. I'm like, ooh, I like the music. So they're like, it's not going to blow your mind, but it's going to have a good soundtrack. And it says that um, it had some interesting camera angles that add to the story at the end. But until you get to the end, you don't know that. And as you're watching it, these weird camera angles kind of like add to like the sense of like suspense or wonder. And so it's it's just they said the really like the way it's filmed is worth watching. And then the last thing they say is that it does have a twist at the very end. You have to get to the very end to get the twist. And so um, Behind Her Eyes, um, it's on Netflix. And if you liked those three things that I mentioned, check it out. Remember, the show itself may not blow your mind, but those are the three reasons it's worth watching. Um, the Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, this is a um, Guillermo del Toro thing. It's spooky, creepy. Um, this one, I don't think I've even finished it. I think I have one more. I have mixed feelings about this one. This one is not nearly as disturbing. Um, there was something else I tried to watch recently and I, not recently, but I did a, have you seen this on it? And I was like, I just stopped watching it altogether. That's not how I feel about this one, but I do have to be in a very specific mood to watch these. These are gory. So I'm definitely not going to be eating while watching these. I don't want to watch these late at night. Um, and I'm not I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, if I watch something scary, I'm going to have nightmares. No, I just don't want want to watch it late at night because I, I just don't want to. Like, I don't want to do that. So that's why I haven't finished it yet. I don't have a, a clear consensus on to whether this is like great or bad. Each one of the episodes in the series is so different. It's hard to clump them together and say, Cabinet of Curiosities is this. I really think it's an episode by episode thing. So if that's something that you're curious about, you could try it. Um, I did finally watch um, the Whitney Houston biopic that was on another streaming app first. I don't remember which it might have been like Apple or Prime or something like that, but it was brought to Netflix. I don't know how long it's going to be on there. I don't know if it's still on there now, but it's the I Want to Dance with Somebody movie about Whitney Houston. I did watch that. And um I don't know how accurate it is. I know that it's supposed to be um, a collaboration between um, the producer and I think also her sister-in-law. So I, I would think that it's accurate, but I mean, I don't care enough about celebrities to, to know, you know what I mean? What I'm saying is that if, if it is accurate, I did learn a lot about her that I didn't know. Um, some of it was just kind of stuff that you kind of knew and you were just like, uh, reinforced but um ultimately it is it is a sad story because um her life ended um earlier than maybe it should have based on choices that she made you know kind of thing but um yeah so I, I definitely um it was something that I'm glad I watched I don't think I'll ever watch it again just because it is sad but not in the sad like like Bambi is sad it's a different kind of sad like these were kind of her choices you know anyway I'm not gonna go on that something on the very funny side that I finally watched um it's been around for a long time was Dairy Girls and I'm not gonna go off too much about Dairy Girls but it, it was definitely a cultural experience I had no idea some of the things that were happening in Ireland in the 90s. And um, of course, you know, there's tragedy and stuff involved too, but that's what I love about these kinds of shows is they take tragic events and make them relatable. Um, they show you how people cope, even in, you know, hard times, you gotta have a laugh or two, you know? 
um, family dynamics, things like that. I just, I, I enjoyed it. And again, it was one of those ones that the way it ended um, wasn't perfect, but it was an ending that worked for them. And so I liked it. You could tell though, and I was telling my husband this, that, you know, there's one of the characters moved on to be part of the Bridgerton series. And you can tell kind of at the end, the way that it's filmed, if you're really paying, if you're not paying attention, you won't notice it at all. But um, I guess this is kind of a spoiler, but you can kind of tell the way that it's filmed at the end, that she's not there with the rest of the cast. And the way they kind of circumvented that to make it seem like she's there with them at the end was, I thought, pretty clever, considering she's literally not there with them. All right. And uh, let's see. I watched a show called Bodyguard. I watched this one because um, in the last Have You Seen This, I talked about the show um, Night Agent. And this was one of those, if you like this, you should try this. So I watched Bodyguard. And I do see the similarities, but um, this I don't think it's really good to have like a direct comparison between these two. One's American, um, one's British. So that right there is going to be like a major difference. Um, one has more of like a, a hero um, redemption kind of tell to it. And the other one is more about uh, mental health kind of. Either way, both extremely good shows. I'm so glad I watched Bodyguard. The guy who's in it, um, he has another, I think, spy thing coming up um, that looks really good. But it's, I really liked um, the bodyguard, not the bodyguard, just bodyguard. All right, let's see. What else? Queen Charlotte. Oh my goodness. So we all know that the whole Bridgerton thing is like this phenomenon. Um, you either are into it or you're not. Um, I, people who are into like Downton Abbey <clears throat> will sometimes really get into Bridgerton. And then some of them are like, it's not purist enough. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> I really don't. I like it. Um, but the story of Queen Charlotte to me is more appealing than the actual Bridgerton show. Again, it's a lot of, you know, romance and drama and stuff. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that, but um, I think the reason why the spinoff series of Queen Charlotte is more appealing to me is because it does kind of get down to the nitty gritty of this alternate world where um, you can see people putting an end to some of the systemic racism um, in this world. And um, it's just, it's amazing to watch. It's like a little bit heartbreaking that why couldn't this be reality? But I mean, it's, it's a fantasy, it's TV, but um, just imagine if we did live in a world where people were just like, hey, let's just do this, you know, let's stop um, keeping, you know, an entire uh, race of people down because of the color of their skin. I don't know. <laughs> so Queen Charlotte, I, I, I loved it. I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail about it, but it was fantastic. And then the last two things that I watched simultaneously, meaning I would watch one episode of one, come out of it, watch one episode of the other, and I went back and forth. <laughs> was the Indian uh, matchmaking and Jewish matchmaking. So Indian matchmaking is in season three, Jewish, ma make, Jewish matchmaking is in season one. So I guess this is like a spinoff. Um, Netflix has this thing where they do kind of um, series in threes, at least with their scripted things. Now with their unscripted things, which these are, they can typically run longer so I don't know if this is their way of ending Indian matchmaker and just focusing on Jewish matchmaker, or maybe they're going to, I don't know, they're going to continue. Either way, the way the um, third season of Indian matchmaker ended, again, if they're not going to do any more of it, I'm happy with the way it ended, but if they're going to continue it, I'm still going to watch it. Um, what I love about both of these shows is for me, it has nothing to do with the actual dating aspect of the show. I like it because I'm getting to look into another culture that I'm not a part of. I'm getting to see things, appreciate things, compare things. And you know what I'm saying? Like you just, this is not something that I feel like is represented a lot. And so I don't know a whole lot about it, 
But what I do know about it, I've learned from watching shows like this. And so for me, um, I'm, I'm not a student of anthropology, but for me, I, this is this is me dipping my toes into that, seeing how, you know, different um, groups of people handle similar situations. You know, what is this culture like? In, and so I, that's why I like watching these shows now there is entertainment value in seeing these people trying to like go on dates and find life partners and stuff like that. So I'm not pretending like that stuff isn't there. I'm not on my high horse pretending that I'm like, I'm not getting into that, but I'm just saying that I'm not watching it specifically because they are matchmaking shows. I'm watching them because I like the cultural aspects of it. And I recently discovered another show that I can't remember the name of. And so I'm not going to talk about it right now, but you'll probably see it in my next one where it follows um, some very rich Africans around. So I'm definitely going to delve into that. So that's what I've been watching. Um, You know me, lots of, you know, animation thrown in there, some science, you know, fiction, action stuff in there. Um, Some unscripted TV, which I, again, it amazes me that I watch unscripted stuff because I really am not a fan of reality TV. But I feel like the unscripted stuff that I watch, you know, like with the animals and the matchmaking stuff, it's because I'm learning something from those. Um, And so anyway, uh, that is what I've been watching. Hopefully it won't be too long before I do another one of these. What have you guys been watching? What do you think about what I've been watching? I'd love to know. So let me know. And until next time, guys, stay safe and be blessed. Hey, if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel give it a like and also leave me a comment. I would love that. Okay.